Yes, okay. Hello, everyone. Oh, nice. So, my name is Yevgen, and I work in Midside, and today I'll be talking about coding. Really cool thingy. And without further ado, let's start. So, what's Kodi? Kodi is, from the high point, point of view, it's just a media player. But very interesting one because it works everywhere. It works on PCs, on Linux, on Windows, it works on mobiles. And it's great because you can watch movies, you can watch series, and, well, without any issues. One thing that's different about it is it allows using the plugins. Those plugins allow more features. So, for example, if you want to watch Netflix or YouTube or Twitch or some other channel that you like to see after the midnight, you can use it without any issues. But you need add-ons for that. The thing is, add-ons are stuff that are being done by other developers. So there are developers who made Kodi and who did actually a great job of doing it. And now you have other guys developing more code in Python that do the other stuff. Work for Netflix, not YouTube, and other things. And as I was saying, it runs everywhere. So if you ever seen some mobile or, or a car stand, you can find the Kodi in there. But the thing is, if we have developers developing plugins and anyone can develop the plugin, it's, well, they might be unsafe. And official Kodi guys said, well, it's unsafe. So just you be sure that it can be unsafe running unattended code on your network because, well, it can be anything. So official documentation says, be careful, add-ons are bad. And now, let's see the first demo. I will show it where we have the thingy. Okay. So here, and here I'm showing how to install a Kodi plugin. As you can see, the interface is very simple. Oh, sorry. No, that's not this, this one. Never mind it. Nothing happened. Okay, this is one. So, as you see, the process is really simple. We have security alert saying, be careful. You need to be sure to install add-ons. And we have two settings. One is updates are installed automatically. I will turn it off just for the presentation. Once again, another, another warning saying that it can damage your computer. And so be careful installing add-ons. And after that, after two warnings, I finally go and install the add-on. And it's installed. So as you can see, the process is a really, well, long. In theory, you should have just a few minutes, a few moments to install something. But here you have confirmation that it may be bad for your computer. So let's see, not this one. Let's see the actual code. Oh, sorry. So the key points. You have a few warnings. And that add-ons are bad, so be careful with them. And the thing is, Kodi Leaks likes to live on the edge, so it auto-install updates. I had to disable it feature for this presentation, but when there is an update for some Kodi plugin, it automatically install, installs it. Okay, so yeah, let's see actual code. It's really hard because it's in XML. And it just actually needs one, one file. So it's called add-on XML. And you just need to zip that file and make the name of the plugin called the version, uh, dash the version and dot zip. As you can see, the code is really simple. So just the XML version, the name, the name of the plugin you're, you're, you're saying, the, it's HID, actual name, the version, and the provider name. In this case, I'm using a repository. So what is repository? Repository is something where you can download more add-ons. So in Kodi, add-on, repository, video add-on, is all add-ons. So you can have anything be here, be in here. 
in this case, I have a few different things and a few interesting ones. So in this case, I'm using, using HTTP. So all the add-ons and updates for them will be passed through HTTP. This could sound strange, because in most of the cases, people would, would might use HTTPS. Not really. In most of the add-ons you see out there, people use HTTP and don't have any problem with that. So a bit further, you need to have the file with MD5. It's just the code that has the MD5 of the file, addons.xml itself. And where can you download the actual add-ons? We have the description metadata where the summary is, the description, and what platform it can run. As I was saying in the beginning, you can run it everywhere. So starting from your phone to any computer on, on the internet. So Linux, Windows, Mac, wherever. Okay. Let's imagine a different case. Let's be the bad guys and make a very malicious code that will do some malicious stuff. The thing is, to update something, we will need a bit more. So as I was saying, you need to have a few different things. You need to have the add-ons, the XML file, and the zip folder with, with the actual add-ons. And in here, we have add-ons XML, add-ons XML with MD5. Well, it's just MD5 of this file. And in this directory, I have the zip of the, of the actual add-on. It's here. And the description of the add-on. In the zip, we have two files, add-on XML and service.py, the Python code. Well, for me, it's just, just some, some basic code. So let's see the, the actual code. The difference here is in add-on, I'll be adding some Python code. So I'll be importing the Python model and I'll be starting a service called service.py when the application is run, when the, the my plugin is run. So it's just these two lines uh, that make the difference. So some malicious guy found the, the code I have, the, the first one, added two these lines, and he can be doing executing Python code. Well, let's see the rest of it. In my service.py, I have a simple, really simple code. It's the basic stuff that waits for, 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 for an object every 10 seconds and executes it. Well, as you can see, the code is really, 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 really difficult and really sophisticated. I, I'm sure all the hackers use it because it creates a file on the desktop and opens it with notepad. So yeah, it's really sophisticated. Here, we have another file called addons.xml. This file is the one that contains all the add-ons. So for example, if I would like to update multiple add-ons or install different ones, I would have more than one, but more than one thing of those. But in this case, I only want to update one to version 02. And that's what I'm, I'm going to do. MD5 is MD5 of the file. Okay. So let's just imagine the scenario of being a man in the middle. So we have a very sophisticated process using HTTP to update the add-ons. And, well, I think everybody knows that we can meet that, that connection. So we can be the middle in those connections. In different places, like public Wi-Fi's, it may sound strange, but there are codes in public Wi-Fi's. You can access them, you can be on the same network as them. Public proxies and Tor and VPN providers are a bit different. But who says if you put a public proxy saying, oh, look, I have a proxy that, that unlocks Netflix for you. So you just, you, you just configure the proxy and everything works. So you obviously will use the, that proxy because you want to, use, to, to watch Netflix without any problems. And you will use it because Netflix has some restriction on countries. And for example, US has more shows than Europe. So saying this is US proxy that has more shows, you just need to use it. You obviously will jump for that. Same thing for Tor and one dollar VPN providers. So yeah, people saying the same thing as proxies. Here, this series is very secure. It's, it's using really, really high grade encryption and just, just pass the traffic through us. So 
Let's see the second demo. In this demo, I'll be presenting the actual attack. So, not this one, this one. So, what I'm doing is I'm checking for updates for my plugin. And I find them. There is an update available. Once again, I was, I changed the settings to update it manually. So I have to force the unupdate. Now let's wait. The add-on is updated. It's already installed my, my version of add-on. So the hacked one. And here we see, once again, a very sophisticated hack. I'm sure everybody does stuff like that. And there's that. So the process of updating an add-on that might even not be yours is really simple. You just have to be on the net, on the end, on the receiving end. So you receive a request for update. You send, oh, I have updates for you. So just install it. Okay, let's see some numbers and some graphs. Oh, sorry guys. This is not about another presentation about cloud and security and GDPR. So let's see the actual data. Here we have an IP count. What is this IP count? We have at BitSight an infrastructure that sees interesting events happening on, on the wild. In this case, we are seeing seven days of data. So there are 802,000 unique IPs of codes. So 8,800, sorry, 800,000 instances of codes running in there and communicating with us in seven days. Well, that might not sound much, but the thing is, we have WannaCry just needs three, 300,000 computers or a reward to, to make so, so much noise. Why I'm comparing these numbers? Well, because the thing is, the size really matters, but in this case, we are talking about codes that can be run anywhere. So that's, it's software running on your phone or even on some other places. So, what are the other place, places? This thing, this number here, 2,117, is number of unique companies that have codes installed. And we have 85 different industries that are running them. In BitSight, we have entity mapping, and we know what company does, has what IP. So we, we know what company where it stays, what is its IP range, what, where its company name, what's, what's its location, stuff like that. So yeah, well, 2,000 unique entities, it's also not much. But let's look at the countries per, first. So yeah, obviously, US has the biggest number of IPs. So once again, this is information about seven days of unique IPs talking to our server. So, if we were the bad guys, we could do, well, some interesting things with it. In Portugal, we have only 4,000 unique entities, uh, sorry, unique IPs. So, well, that doesn't sound much. But let's, let's see the actual interesting part. So, as I was saying, BitSide does entity mapping. And one of the entity mapping is understanding the sector. So, well, we have a few different entities in different sectors, like hospitals, like government, like gambling and casinos, banking, and insurance. Yeah, the rest of, the, of them are also interesting, but I think this one are the most interesting one, ones. So what, what could this mean? This means we have access to some device on the network of some random bank, random casino, random government administration entity. So, yeah. The thing is, this is not, not much. It's just a code. It's just a simple device running some code. Someone, someone just wanted to watch some, some movies on, on any company. But, well, that company might be an interesting one. Okay. The thing is, it was really, really nice. It's, it's really a sophisticated attack. <laughs> and how can we protect? Well, the thing is, Codes are devices that don't need much, much network. They need just access to some specific stuff. So we can segregate them. We can have them run independently 
of the other devices. So it's, you can put it somewhere far from ATMs, from POSs, and stuff like that in, in case of the, of the banks, and far from the servers in case of other companies. Well, the second thing is check your own sources. It's, it's really important because, well, if you have a domain that runs updates through HTTP, it's really something bad. <laughs> So, well, be sure to, to see what you're installing. The same thing of Kodi is, it's just like Windows. You can install anything, but you can make it safe. So be careful with those. Well, this one is, is hard one. Just use HTTPS. So if we have access to a network communication between the Kodi and the network, in case of HTTPS, we would have some issues installing our add-on, our updates. And, well, test the updates before the, the adding them to production. It also works for other things, not just for codies. So, yeah, it just, just let it be there. Okay, and it was really fast. So, thanks. <laughs> Any questions? So how did you actually detect the number of uh, IPs that are running a Kodi device? Uh, do they have some service exposed that you can connect to? Or is this yes. something else? We, at BitSight, we have a magical thinking using machine learning and blockchain technology. And yeah, it's, it's, ju it's just, whoa. So we do some calling. So we find the details of some, how some stuff works. And we just start doing more research how to understand how the network works. And well, it's really a com complex process. It's really complex process. You know, we just need to do a lot of data analysis and that kind of stuff to get something like this. So we do sync calling of some different domains and dif different networks and there we get the data. So, yeah. Any more? Well, looks like not. Thanks once again, guys. <laughs>